What is up guys? Welcome back for our week 3 match for GBA Season 9. This week we are taking on Tom and the San Jose Sharpedos. Tom is a good friend of ours. Uh, we spent a lot of time building together and um, and we uh, we looked over each other's matches. We've been on the same team for a certain tournament, so uh, that we... Uh, we have a, a lot of uh, a lot of time spent together, especially with trying to, to run and, and keep this league uh, on its feet as much as possible. Uh, so, Tom uh, Tom has a very scary team. Looking over his team, you guys can see it on the right side. He has a Mega Lucario, which is uh, very threatening. A lot of people um, said, "Why didn't you grab Mega Lucario over Mega Mawile?" Um, I personally feel like Mega Mawile has more potential than Mega Lucario in this format. So that's just me. Uh, but to couple with that. He has a lot of very strong offense. So he has Tapu Koko, a mon that I'm very familiar with. Uh, Weavile, Gliscor, Whimsicott, Latios, Araquanid, Drapion, Cloyster, Mesprit, and Scizor. So there's a lot of really big threats here. The main thing I notice is that he has two bullet punchers. Uh, in Mega Lucario and Scizor, uh, Scizor, and both are very, very threatening. So, obviously, my Rotom is going to end up coming to this game. Uh, and so is Torn. Both can deal with uh, those two relatively well. Uh, he does have a Tapu Koko. Uh, this is something I mentioned uh, back in the NPL uh, when when we were there in Season uh, 8. And it was that uh, because of Koko, a lot of people were afraid to bring their flying types. I'm not going to be one of those people who's not going to bring their Tornadus because my opponent has a Tapu Koko. Because my Tornadus is way too good here. Against all of his slower mons like Whimsicott, Latios, uh, Araquanid, Drapion, Cloyster, all of them. Um, Z Hurricane is very strong. It's, it's a very, very strong move, and he has a very hard time switching into it. In fact, his only switch in is Coco, and I could be running Sludge Wave. So there's a lot of mind games there, uh, and there are some good opportunities for me to be able to go for Z Hurricane. So that's what we're bringing, Flyanium Z, with Heat Wave, Hurricane, of course, U-Turn, and Defog. So first thing I want to mention is that U-Turn uh, was initially knockoff. And the reason I switched it was because I figured there was no chance that I was ever going to knock off an important enough item. And I thought that uh, on the lead matchup, if it's uh, Torn versus Mesprit, I'm going to click Z Hurricane anyway because he's going to want to get up rocks or Thunder Wave me, one or the other. Uh, it's going to be one of those two options. So I'm probably going to click Z Hurricane, so I don't really need knock off for that. A Gliscor lead would be the only other... Uh, possible like reason to bring knockoff because nothing else really matters latios i can u-turn on and i can get off about the same damage especially considering that his latios is his zemon uh so if it's rocking a z crystal i will be doing more damage with u-turn uh and then there's um there's of course the fact that he has a mega lucario uh which if i click knockoff as he switches in in regular form he gets a justified boost and then uh, things aren't looking too good so uh, i decided to opt for u-turn instead of knockoff and last move defog because of course tom does have access to spikes toxic spikes sticky web multiple stealth rockers so i uh, gotta be very careful with his hazards so i need a, a defogger on the team and i felt like torn was uh, was a good enough one uh the um uh, the investment on this mon i'll explain the 196.52 spread that is to be able to and it actually turns out that i messed it up and needed a little less defense but this is to be able to take jolly uh plus two bullet punch from mega lucario after rocks uh, his regular bullet punch, uh, if he does, if he doesn't go to plus two, has a point. So actually, I didn't mess up. Never mind. It's the plus two that uh, that matters. If he hits me twice with a regular bullet punch after rocks, there's a point four, uh, point yeah, point four percent chance that he can knock me out. He needs two absolute max rolls. So uh, that's the investment there. We have a heat wave, of course, because it hits the Mega Lucario. Hurricane Z Fly does the same. Um, and uh, the special attack investment. Uh, was what I had left over after investing in my speed. I needed enough speed. Uh, I believe this is for his Mega Lucario, if I'm not mistaken, at max speed if he decides to run that. I wasn't going to mess around with him only speed creeping my uh, my Cobalion. I could be wrong, though. This, this could be the speed creep on Cobalion. Uh, but I don't think it is. I think it's just regularly outspeeding uh, Lucario. Uh, and then, of course, we have uh, 60 in special attack and the last four in special defense. So, moving on to our next mod on the team, we have Greg. 
Rotom coming once again. Uh, we have a Lumberry with Volt Switch, Hydro Pump, Will-O-Wisp, and Pain Split. So Willow is a very, very strong move against this team. In fact, this isn't my only Willow Whisper on the team, and you guys will see that later. So uh, his physical attackers do not like switching into Rotom at all because of the threat of Willow Wisp, and his special attackers don't like taking Volt Switches uh, and giving me momentum into other Mons. So I feel like this is the perfect combination uh, against this team. On top of that, uh, Gliscor is a pretty difficult mon for me to deal with because I have multiple ground weaknesses on this team, as you will see. And uh, that is part of the reason why I have a Lumberry is to be able to stop Gliscor from just toxic stalling me if it ever predicts my Rotom coming in. Max defense, of course, makes a lot of sense because of Weavile, because of Lucario, um, because of the Araquanid, especially, and definitely Cloyster. That was another big one uh, that I felt I needed to check with a max defense Rotom, so I didn't invest any speed in to this thing and um pain split is there just to be able to get uh, keep me give me longevity i didn't need a fourth move so i decided on pain split i could have gone reflect or light screen obviously or anything of the sort th thunder wave toxic but uh but i really felt like pain split was going to be the uh, the the utmost the best option because if his gliscor does happen to get off like damage on me or whatever uh, or if Araquanid hits me with a couple of liquidations throughout the game, if I pain split uh, on a mon that has full health, I'm able to get back up and, and check those mons again. So that's uh, that's sort of mosh, that's Greg. Moving on into our uh, kill leader, currently Togavar, Mega Maw Wild. We got Play Rough, Ice Punch, Sucker Punch, and Stealth Rock. Uh, once again, I am bringing Mega Maw Wild as my Stealth Rocker, and that is because I am bringing two other Stealth Rockers. However, they have much more important roles than getting up rocks. So you guys will see that. Play rough. Um, where are his switchins? <laughs> Can anybody tell me where Tom's play rough switchins are? Uh, outside of a defensive scissor, he doesn't have any. <laughs> so he's extremely very weak. Uh, anytime I get off a free play rough, I'm basically getting a kill. Play rough into sucker punch kills almost everything. Um, Ice Punch is there for the Gliscor, Sucker Punch of course to uh, be able to revenge the Latios, uh, as well as the Cloyster, uh, potentially the Tapu Koko if I get it lo low enough, uh, a few other things obviously like Mesprit and whatnot, so it's a pretty straightforward set, I didn't deci I decided not to bring Swords Dance, I didn't feel like it was good enough because his Mega Lucario has priority Bullet Punch which outspeeds my Sucker Punch. Uh, so having Swords Dance for that wouldn't make a difference, and I'd have to play mind games with Weavile either. Well, I mean, if I'm at full, I don't have to play mind games with Weavile at all. I can just go for the play rough, but uh, but I don't want like his Whimsicott locking me into Swords Dance or Sucker Punch at any point. So I'd rather I'd much rather be clicking play rough uh, and or Ice Punch than Sucker Punch ever, and even less so. Uh, swords dance so that's the set uh, just max attack add him in a little bit of speed to make sure that I sped crap the uh, the Araquanid uh, that he's not creeping me by anything and then the rest in HP so moving on um, we have Kronovi, uh Tyranitar coming back this week um, the item is Choppleberry. It was initially Iapapa Berry and I had investment correct investment to be able to take uh, the combination of um, Lucario's Bullet Punch into Coco's Thunderbolt, always after rocks, and uh, basically live on whatever HP and then get back uh, 70 or 50% health. However, that didn't seem useful after I, I had a few mocks because there was no reason to get back my health after that point, except for if Weavile would Ice Shard me, I guess. But then he'd still have to sack two mons to Titar, and that's this thing's job. As you can see, it's a Dragon Dance, Rock Slide, Ice Punch, Earthquake set. The very similar um, idea to Mega Mawile in that the coverage pretty much covers his whole team. Uh, Rock Slide, of course, hitting the um, the Araquanid as well as the Weavile and the Cloyster. Uh, Ice Punch hitting the uh, Gliscor for super effective damage, that's mainly what I need it for, but it also hits the Latios and the Whimsicott, and Earthquake then hits Lucario, Coco, and uh, Drapion for super effective. The only mons I don't have super effective coverage for are the Mesprit and the Scizor at the bottom. Uh, however, I feel like those are less likely to come, and even so, 
Uh, if Scizor does come, like I mentioned, I have uh, Rotom as well as Tornadus to be able to check it, as well as one more Mon that you will see. Uh, so I, I'm not too worried about Scizor. As a result, I switched the item over to Choppleberry. Shoutouts to Eshon for uh, giving me great mocks and uh, showing me the Chopple was the better option in this matchup for a few reasons. Obviously, Weavile's low kick. Uh, I don't outspeed Weavile at plus one, nor do I outspeed Coco. So if I get off a Dragon Dance as he goes into Weavile to sack it and gets off a low kick, I'll be able to live it with thanks to the Choppleberry and kill his Weavile, and that's, that's the idea there. Uh, and then I'll have enough speed to outspeed pretty much everything outside of his Coco. So, uh, that's, or any Scarfers, I guess. So, the Dragon Dance is really just to, to be able to outspeed Lucario and whatnot. Uh, obviously, Bullet Punch will kill me, but uh, if I force him into Bullet Punch rather than Swords Dancing at any given point of the game, that's a good thing. Uh, and then the investment, of course, is just max attack, max speed, with enough speed for when I get to plus one to outspeed Mega Lucario. Moving on to the next Mon on the team, the newest member of the Montreal Havsols, we have Bat Signal the Lunala. So, if you guys didn't know, uh, I swapped out uh, Necrozma, Dawnwings, and Articuno for Lunala and Stoutland. Hopefully I'll have made a video about it by then, but I don't know if I will have, in which case this is the first time you're hearing about it. Um, and I felt that Lunala, Lunala was a lot better on this, uh, on this team. Uh, and this is the reason why, a set like this. So, Shadow Shield, uh, great ability. When you're at full, you take half damage. It's at multi-scale. Uh, Will-O-Wisp, sick, 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 sick thing to have on a Mon that's weak to knock off and pursuit. Catching dark types on the switch with a Will-O-Wisp pretty much uh, makes Lunala almost invincible, I want to say. Uh, then we have Trick Room, Roost, and Ice Beam. So Roost is to be able to get back up to full. Uh, it's not hindered by the sand. However, Shadow Shield is, of course. Um, but I don't only get back 25% if the sand is up, thankfully. Uh, which Necrozma Dawnwings had that problem. So it wasn't a great partner with Titar. Uh, and then having a coverage move like Ice Beam, if you look at Tom's team, Ice Beam plus Will-O-Wisp. Like, Will-O-Wisp isn't even an attacking move, but Ice Beam plus Will-O-Wisp cripples everything. It deals with literally everything. And then having access to Trick Room still, uh, I felt like uh, going with a no-speed Lunala, getting up Trick Room, and having pressure for four more turns on his side, with him being able, unable to switch around my Ice Beam and Will-O-Wisp co combination, uh, I felt was really good. As well as, obviously, getting up the Trick Room for Mega Mawile. So... That was the idea there. Of course, there's also a uh, T-Tar that takes advantage of the Trick Room. On the very last turn of Trick Room, if I drag and dance up as he goes for one more switch, I am then faster than everything as opposed to being slower. So that's uh, it's, it's a really nice tech here, I feel. Uh, it's not a Trick Room team, but it, there's Trick Room tossed on because it benefits Lunala as well as a couple of other mons. So that's that. And the, uh, the investment uh, was just uh, to maximize on my bulk. I calced uh, all of the knockoffs and, and uh, pursuits. Of course, we're Cold Berry, if you didn't notice, so I'll be able to take knockoffs and pursuits uh, initially, uh, as well as uh, this investment allows me to live uh, two Coco Thunderbolts no problem, uh, even if I'm outside of Shadow Shield, and I'll be able to roost them off. So that, that was the idea there, was to be able to have a good Coco check that is not my Nido Queen, which I'm bringing. So I don't want to br bring in Nido Queen on his Coco ever. The idea is to have a switch in in Lunala. Uh, of course, if he's physical, then it, it, it's different. Then I'd have to bring in Nido Queen. But if he's a special set, I don't want to bring in Nido Queen. I want to bring in Lunala as much as possible. Liz is going to be here to catch Tom off guard. So uh, we are Sheer Force, of course, but we're Choice Scarfed. And the reason we're Choice Scarfed is because this gives me something faster than his Lucario, his Coco, and his Weavile, his three main offensive threats. And I have coverage for all of them, of course. Earth Power hits uh, Lucario and Coco for super effective, and uh, Flamethrower or Super Power hit Weavile super effectively. So, uh, there is a scenario, of course, where I could lead with uh, Nino Queen, and he leads with Weavile, and if it's not sashed or scarfed, I can knock it out with a Super Power turn one as he's thinking that he can go for a uh, for an Icicle Crash, for example. 
Flamethrower is there for the Scizor, mainly. Of course, it also gives me a way to sort of uh, semi-sweep at the end of the game um, with Flamethrower in case any of his uh, Mons off the ground are still alive, uh, i.e. Gliscor or Latios. If I have to lock into Flamethrower to kill like Scizor, Cloyster, Mega Lucario, and Gliscor, if Gliscor is low, of course, then I'll do that. But mainly, the idea uh, behind the spread and the Flamethrower is that I can live a plus two life for Bullet punch from jolly scissor i want to say um and uh, be able to fire back a flamethrower uh, even if rocks are up uh the 236 special attack of course is just as much as i could give it um and then the 180 speed allows me to outspeed again all of his fastest mons the lucario coco and weavile combination so that's uh that's everything for the team it's pretty straightforward uh and uh so let's let's get right into the battle guys so let's look at the matchup here so Tom decided to bring Gliscor, Drapion, Raquinid, Weavile, Coco, and Mega Lucario. Um, the mock that I had, um, the only mock that I had with Eshan, there were not really this combination of mods. Like it was pretty much a full offense team. Uh, whereas this has like some really interesting defensive options in Gliscor, uh, Drapion, and Raquinid. I did expect Tom to bring both Dark types. That is one thing I will say. Despite my mock not having both and only having Weavile on it. I really, really, really expected both darks to come. And the reason being is that Lunala is such a big threat to Tom that he needs multiple switch-ins in case one dies. So, um, I feel like the Lunala set that I brought is really going to be able to take advantage of that. Uh, Coco, Lucario, and Weavile, the three offensive threats are here. Uh, Araquanid is here though, and this is really good for me because Araquanid is a main target for me to go for play rough on that and the Drapion. Of course, Drapion gets Earthquake, but um, that's not too big of a deal to Mawile, especially after Intimidate. Uh, Weavile is the other target. So Tom gave me three targets to hit him with play rough, and that's huge. That's that, that I couldn't have asked for better. Uh, in this game. It, it's really going to help me out a lot that I'm going to be able to to get in my mobile multiple times and be able to click play rough uh, as often as I want. Uh, my win con is looking like either Nidoqueen or uh, a late game Tyranitar. Nidoqueen can definitely clean up this team if I get rid of his Gliscor early enough. I can earth power through everything. Uh, and if not, then T-Tar can do it so long as I don't take any necessary hits. Or if I take like a Thunderbolt in Sand, I should be able to uh, to live Lucario's Bullet Punch thereafter. So, uh, let's get right into the game. Uh, we might lag out a little bit uh, here. No, we don't. Awesome. Okay, cool. So Citra didn't uh, didn't mess me up this time. I think it's because I closed everything else. <laughs> so I'm going to lead off with uh, my Tornadus T here, uh, 49%. Uh, as I feel like it's the best lead. I have a good switch into Weavile, so I'm not too worried. I also have a good switch into his uh, Coco. He actually leads off with Gliscor, so having knockoff here would have been amazing. But uh, I'm just going to go for U-Turn, and I'm going to get in my, uh, my Rotom on this turn, as he is actually going to do the same and go for a U-Turn of his own. And he is going to get in his Tapu Koko now. Like last week, uh, and this is something that I've noticed about my team, I'm very weak to strong electric types. However, I know Tom very well. And I know that he likes to gain momentum on teams uh, and keep up offensive momentum early in the game. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go for a Volt Switch as opposed to going for a switch out into Nidoqueen because Nidoqueen seems a little too obvious. And I'm going to be able to eat up the U-turn as he goes into Araquanid uh, Metroid, and I'm going to get off a Volt Switch, and I see from the Volt Switch damage, which of course is not affected by uh, the terrain because of Levitate, that his uh, Araquanid is actually just max HP. It doesn't have any other investment elsewhere, or it's very close to that. So I'm going to bring in my Mawile. Like I said, I have three targets on his team for Mawile to go crazy on. This is one of them. So I'm going to get off my Mega right here. Uh, and play rough uh, from the calc that I'm looking at should be able to kill no problem uh, So I'm gonna fire it off here. It's like a min of 80 uh, However, I miss and he gets off a liquidation here, and he's gonna get off uh, quite a bit of damage on me uh, But I'm still a check to weavile. It's not a problem so long as I land my next play rough I'll be able to knock out the Araquanid and we're fine, but I miss again and He hits me with another liquidation after my defense got dropped which means I fall to 7 HP. Please, for the love of God, Mawile, don't miss another play rough. Thank you. Goodbye, Araquanid. Okay, so 
I was able to get rid of the Raquinid, uh, however it cost me my biggest offensive threat to his team. Uh, and now his Weavile uh, is pretty much uh, free game uh, against my whole team, so this is going to be very, very hard for me. Uh, I'm going to switch out of my Mega Mawile here, and I'm going to go into my Tornadus, as I'll be able to uh, take a hit from this Lucario uh, decently well. He goes for the Mega Evolution, and he's going to uh, go for a Bullet Punch, I believe, right here. Um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it does a little under half. Let's see. Uh, as it does, yeah, okay, so it does around the 30% 30, uh, 30 mark, uh, as I believe I actually get uh, regen uh, later, and I end up at 178 out of, out of 179, so it must have been around 32-ish 30, uh, percent. I think 33 is, is regen. I'm actually going to go for a U-turn here as opposed to going for a Heat Wave, uh, because I knew that Tom would fear me being able to knock out his Lucario, so I'm going to get him offensive momentum on his Coco again, which is really nice. Instead of going into Needle Queen, though, which is Scarfed, of course, I'm going to go into Bat Signal, and I'm going to be able to get off a Trick Room right here as he goes for a U-turn. I believe, actually, I might go for a Will-O-Wisp here, expecting him to U-turn. I'm not sure. Uh, but he's going to go into Skolex, which is the uh, Drapion here. Uh, and I believe I do get up a... Uh, no, I go for a Will-O-Wisp, and I do connect. So thankfully, we're not having another Mawile situation here. His uh, Drapion gets burned, and now I'm going to be able to get off a Trick Room. No, no problem, thanks to the combination of the burn and my Culver Berry. And uh, I'm actually going to switch out, and he goes for a Pursuit. So my Culver gets wasted, uh, as I could have gone for a Trick Room there, uh, and just, like, roosted back up to full or started to damage this, uh, this Drapion. But it's fine. I should be able to get up my Trick Room later on his Coco anyway. So I'm going to get in my Torn here, and I feel like this is the prime opportunity for me to go for a Z-Hurricane, as it should knock out a uh, Drapion from this range of health. Uh, it does like a min of 86, and he took uh, two rounds of burn, so if he has no defensive investment, he should drop to this. Uh, either way, I'm going to get off big damage on something, and that's what I'm looking for. So I'm going to get off the Supersonic Sky Strike. Uh, here we go. We go and hit up this, uh, this Drapion. This here, uh, Assault Vest uh, Drapion, and unfortunately this does do uh, like no damage to the Drapion. Uh, he's going to go for Ice Fang, and uh, I'm going to take a little bit of damage, it's not going to be too bad. Except that he freezes me, and uh, now we're in yet another bad spot because my main Lucario check is out of the game. So, uh, this is looking really bad because now I have a Frozen Tornadus, I'm going to try to thaw here, obviously. Uh, I'm going to go for a Heat Wave. Seeing if that would thaw me by chance, and maybe the gods would, would allow fire to thaw uh, my Tornadus, but that's not what happens, because um, Heat Wave is not one of the moves that thaws, so. I'm going to switch into um, into Lunala here, uh, as he goes for a Hidden Power, so he's predicting my Nido Queen, so this is actually quite good for me, because uh, he does no damage with Hidden Power, as you can see, and I'm going to get off a Roost here, as he goes back into Skalix, so I'm going to get back into Shadow Shield, as his uh, Drapion is now sitting at about 26, 27-ish percent, uh, and I'm going to get back up to full, which means that now his uh, dark moves are not doing at all any damage, so I'm not worried about them whatsoever. Uh, he goes for a knockoff. It does very pitiful damage, as you can see. That did 40 to a quad resist, uh, to a quad uh, weak, excuse me, and I get off a, a trick room here, and uh, he's going to take a little bit of burn damage, and uh, I'm going to play with the trick room turns a little bit, uh, I'm going to go for a Roost here. I kind of expected him to switch potentially, but he doesn't. He ends up staying in with his Drapion, and uh, he's just going to go for another knockoff. I'm going to keep getting back into Shadow Shield. As long as he doesn't crit me, I'm fine. And uh, right here, I decide not to waste any more Trick Room turns, and I'm just going to go for an Ice Beam. And following this turn, it took Tom quite a while to figure out what to do here. And I fully understand, because I'm in Trick Room with Will-O-Wisp and Ice Beam. So it, it becomes very, very hard for him to try to deal with my, uh, my Lunala at this point. So um, here he's going to go for a uh, Thunderbolt, I believe, as I go for an Ice Beam. He could also go for a U-turn. It might be a U-turn. Uh, yeah, he does go for a U-turn. And I believe he's going to bring in his Weavile, if I'm not mistaken, uh, on this turn. As he does go into... No, he goes into Manticore. That is the, uh, the, gl the Gliscor. And uh, I know that he's not going to stay in on an Ice Beam, so... I'm going to go for a Roost, and I'm going to get back into Shadow Shield, as he actually doubles out, and he does go back into, uh, and now he goes into the Weavile, which is perfect, because Trick Room expires this turn, but I'm back in Shadow Shield, <laughs> so we're looking pretty good. I could have Will-O-Wisp that turn, for sure, 
Uh, it's just that I felt like Roosting was the better option overall because I would take, uh, I would at least be at a good amount of health if he did decide to stay in with his Gliscor. Now he's going to go for a knockoff. This is actually going to do quite a bit of damage despite Shadow Shield, and that's because the Weavile is Life Orb. Uh, and we are going to get off a Trick Room now here. I expect Tom to just knock off again because if I Will-O-Wisp, he wants to get rid of this Lunala if possible. So I'm gonna actually going to switch out. I know he's not going to Pursuit here, and I'm going to bring in my Mawile to finally sack it off. So, this is the first Mon down on our side, and uh, there goes our Togevoir, unfortunately only getting one kill this week when it could have gotten like four. Uh, so, take some Life Orb damage. I'm now going to go into my T-Tar, and I need to connect a Rock Slide. <laughs> this entire game I was like worried about missing moves because of those first two Play Rough move, uh, misses. But I'm just going to go for a Rock Slide because he basically has no switch-ins right now to my T-Tar. Uh, it, it's a, in a pretty commanding position, uh, seeing that he now only has the Lucario the uh, Gliscor and the Coco left, we're looking pretty strong here. So he's going to go into his Lucario right now. I know that Earthquake doesn't knock this thing out from full, however, and this is the reason that I switch out here. Uh, and I'm going to go out into my uh, Necrozma, uh, not my Necrozma, excuse me, my Lunala. I'm still uh, working with Necrozma in my head. And I know that Bullet Punch is going to two-shot me, but it's fine. I don't mind that too much. Uh, mainly because I just want to be able to get in something to deal with this after. So he's going to go for another Bullet Punch, and it's going to knock my uh, my Lunala out, which is fine. Lunala still got a kill this game and got one on Drapion, so it's all good. As we're now going to go into Greg, and Greg should be healthy enough to take any hit from this Lucario, even close combat. So I'm just going to go for a Hydro Pump here, and uh, he's going to bring in his Coco, and uh, Hydro Pump should easily be able to knock this thing out. Unless it's an Assault Vest set, of course, but I doubt he'd bring two, two Assault Vest Mons. But a Hydro Pump is another move that can miss, ladies and gentlemen, and we miss again. So what should have been a dead Coco is now going to be a Coco that can hit me up for a ton of damage with Thunderbolt. And I'm going to then knock it out with a Hydro Pump that actually connects this time, so thank goodness for that. Uh, as his, his uh, Coco finally goes down. However, I'm left in a pretty bad position now because his Lucario can straight sweep through me, and if he calls it right that my Nidoqueen is scarfed and switches out into Gliscor every time as I try to Earth Power him, I'm in a very, very bad spot. But Tom goes for a Bullet Punch here. And I looked away from my screen when this happened, and I thought that my Rotom was dead. But then I saw the Will-O-Wisp go off as my eyes turned back to my screen. And I asked myself, what the hell happened? I was in shock that Bullet Punch didn't knock me out, by the way. That did, what, th did anybody catch the amount there? I think it was like 9 damage or something? It was something pathetic. But I was, uh, like, Lucario, why are, why are you not strong, man? Uh, <laughs> that's, that's all that was going through my head. I was like, how the hell did I get off a Will-O-Wisp on this thing? And that's actually going to change the outcome of this endgame, because now... Uh, all I have to do is go into Titar. I can live close combat thanks to Burn plus Chopple, same as Lunala earlier with the uh, with the Culverberry, and uh, he, as you as you'll see here, knocks me down to 32%, uh, gets a defense drop, and I'm gonna go for an Earthquake here, and this is going to leave my Needle Queen open to be able to Ice Beam the Gliscor, the only remaining Mon on his side. I tried to uh, preserve Differential here. Uh, in some way, but I, I realized that that wasn't going to be a good idea because if for whatever reason uh, his Gliscor had the investment to live my Ice Beam somehow uh, and he um, he and my, and my Torn stayed frozen and he was like a uh, Swords Dance variant or something, then I could definitely lose this game. So I decided to sack off my T-Tar here going for an Ice Punch uh, at the same time. And I'm then going to bring in my Needle Queen. My Needle Queen, which should be able to hit eat an Earthquake up no problem. Uh, and be able to knock out the Gliscor with an Ice Beam as well, no problem. So, um, as long as something goes, ter uh, unless something goes terribly wrong here, I'm winning this game with Ice Beam right now. And that is what happens. We are able to uh, weasel our way back from a very dangerous situation. Uh, Lunala, I believe, uh, was still alive. No, it wasn't alive anymore at the end game. I have to actually fix that on the sheet. Uh, this was a 2-0 and not a 3-0. I think like every game this week was like a 1-0 or a 2-0. You guys should go and check out the other games. But uh, GG to my buddy Tom. 
Uh, I know that he was pretty upset about the way that he played this game. Uh, there were a lot of situations where I knew pretty much what Tom was going to do. Uh, it, it was like blatantly obvious, but I guess that he didn't realize that the, the plays that he was making were as obvious as they were like um, And I think a lot of, uh, a big part of it is the fact that I know Tom so well And I know the way that he plays so I knew that he would like u-turn on the second turn with his uh, with his Coco and whatnot and the fact that he wouldn't pursue with his Weavile on my Lunala and uh, and stuff like that so you know, it's uh I don't know. Uh, I, I mean, I think that Tom played decently. I think that he was able to uh, to take advantage of the of the hacks that of the multiple hacks turns that he did get, and uh, he was able to put himself in uh, a semi uh, winning position. I think that bullet punching my Rotom at the end was his biggest misplay. If he had just gone for close combat, he probably would have won. Because if I bring in Torn, which is frozen, he can just go to Gliscor, U-turn out, and if on the U-turn turn I stay frozen, he can go back into his Lucario and then just pressure me with Bullet Punch. I don't know if he had Ice Punch. That was always something that I was kind of worried about with his Lucario, but uh, I knew that I could take Ice Punch into uh, into Bullet Punch as well. That was another reason that I had that investment on Torn was to be able to take that combination if rocks weren't up. So. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Uh, him him not bullet him bullet punching there at the end was was really weird. But either way, good game to Tom. Uh, guys, definitely go and check him out and go and check out his side. Uh, I also made some suggestions for what he should do with his team, uh, how he should change it up. He has one free agency switch left, and uh, it's quite interesting. The mon <laughs> the mon that I suggested for him to switch. I don't know if he's gonna actually end up doing it. The night that I'm recording this is like Saturday night, um, right after uh, my my last video went up last night. So, yeah, I, I don't know if he's actually going to do it, but uh, if he does, then I think that his team will greatly improve and that he'll find success. Uh, he is a division rival, but he is also a friend of mine, so I want to see him do well. But so uh, definitely go and check him out, guys. Uh, as always, link in the description. Make sure to leave a like for me down below if you guys did enjoy this game. If you think that uh, the team is now a little bit better with Lunala and Stoutland as well, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to know your thoughts on the switches, uh, on, the, uh, on the changes, rather, that we made with the team. And if you're not a, a subscriber yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you as part of the, the family. And uh, thanks again for watching, guys. And I'll catch you guys later. Ciao.